Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, I'm Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called The Woodland Road. It's an 8x10. Painted this thing yesterday. Pretty happy with it. Um, now, in the... Uh, we're going to get right into talking about this painting, but uh, just want to point out members area. That's a... Um, um, something you can join here in the channel that would have the full painting session real time um, You get to see the reference and uh, color mixing and all that so something to check out if you want to get into a little more depth here um, Meanwhile though, let's talk about what we're doing um, So we're working on a textured panel. It's hardboard. It's textured with a uh, Actually, it's textured with some black acrylic gesso two coats um, using a paper towel crumpled newspaper things like that um, and after that's dry, kind of scrape down a little, I go in with a layer of oil paint, which is the color you see there, kind of sort of raw sienna color. Um, that's my under, that's my, my board. Um, the underpainting we're doing now, it's basically some burn number with a little burnt sienna, a little black. I probably could have just worked with straight up burn number, but I was messing around. Um. This one was interesting because because of the 8x10, it's a little bit of a squeeze, but uh, I used to, uh, for a long time, I was doing a lot of 8x10s, but I found this uh, sort of proportional, a little frustrating, but once you come to terms with it, uh, um, it can be fine. So one thing I want to point out in my reference image, that's why I reminded me to tell you about the members area um, you'll see like this kind of road and my reference photo is like it's so wide it takes up the whole bottom of the image you know uh, usually it's a good idea to pull those in more human scale okay it wouldn't seem like that to your human um, vision um, if you were walking down that road uh, it would seem more like I painted it so um, just a little tip for you you know if you're um, you're translating your photos or photos into paintings uh, watch out for that wide angle thing like uh, it makes uh, things in the distance really tiny and it makes things in the foreground really wide so something to watch out for uh, coming in right now with a little bit of um, still burn umber with some black added uh, just uh, working at working out some things and I really uh, love the way that the uh, burn umber and black uh, look on the um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the prepared uh, surface of the board. It's a beautiful sort of look and quality, so much so that a lot of times I go, oh, do I really want to finish uh, and go into the painting stage? But yes, I do, because, you know, as beautiful as it is. I, I'm a big believer in having things beautiful at every stage of the painting process. Um, now, there are people that do a lot of wonderful work that don't don't work that way. Uh, and it's not to say there's anything wrong with what they're doing. It's just from my particular taste. I like to stack beauty on top of beauty on top of beauty. Yeah, um, I, I find that doing an underpainting stage is very valuable. If it's not something you've tried, I, I recommend you do try it. And the nice thing about um, doing something like that is you can let that dry and then do your color painting later. So if you're a little time challenged, it's something you can do in a half hour 40 minutes you know or less depending on the complexity of the scene it allows you to work out the composition uh in this case uh, this sort of scene requires massive amounts of simplification uh you know f uh, first of all um, i've talked a lot about sky holes on this channel um sky holes you want to limit the quantity of sky holes that's something that I've gotten better and better at over the years. If you look at the work of the masters, like your your George Ines or your John Francis Murphy, um, you'll see that they eliminate almost all the sky holes from their trees. Um, this wasn't the case in this painting, but uh, where I maybe have 10 to 15 sky holes peeking through uh, in the reference image, it was maybe hundreds, right? So just a tip for you, a little tip. Uh, also, um, of course, in the reference photo, the sky would have been just plain white, all blown out. And um, I kind of mixed in a little warm gray and some cool gray and some white. And this white I'm laying in now, I decided it would be nicer if it was maybe a little more yellow. So you'll see me bringing that in a little bit. And uh, what I like to do is like get the, the drawing slash underpainting done. 
Um, in this case, it went fairly dark, maybe not as dark as I was going to go with the dark areas of the landscape, um, but somewhat dark. And then uh, I'll do the sky, and then um, I think it, what you'll see me he do here is to restate those darks a bit more, and then go from those dark areas to meet the lightest areas of the sky. So that's a progression I do all the time because it, it's logical, it makes sense. Um, and it's good to have, uh, um, let's say, how do I want to say this? You know, it's good to have a logical pro uh, progression that you use to get your paintings done, that you can rely on and lean on, um, but still leave way for various inspirations that come up as you're painting. Um, and a lot of the inspiration, of course, comes up from your interaction with the the board, the painting itself, and your reference image, and of course the time component, how much time are you spending. I like to move through at a pretty brisk pace, but not at um, a manic pace by any means, just slow and steady and all the way through, and not really that slow, but not really that uh, fast either. Um, and just get her done. and. That seems to work well for me. Now you see me uh, coming in with some actual black. And um, I'll point out to you, you know, on these texture boards, you got to maybe um, be a little careful to get uh, a little more paint down because um, a lot of times I find when I'm coming in with a coat of liquid or something over the top, um, some uh, some of the paint can rub away. And that's just because it's, it's sitting on top. If it's very thin, it's just sitting on top of that oil paint layer. Um, you know, you want to have a little more, a little more weight there. Anyway, you can see I kind of uh, tend to overstate the darks a bit uh, because you want uh, you can paint on top of them, right? You don't want to. It, it, you can you can plop some dark over passages that are painted more like in a middle tone, um, but your best bet's almost always to have those darks set and established. Yeah. Um, and we're coming in with some greens, and I pre-mixed uh, a pretty. There's a lot of greens in this uh, scene, and uh, it's kind of a. It's the kind of scene I really like, where we're kind of we're in the dark sort of setting, and we're going into the light. I I, I never get tired of that, and I have a big folder full of um, reference images like this. Uh, you know, they're all slightly different, and uh, I've made quite a lot of successful paintings. Um, based on this sort of motif and uh, that's something I thought it'd be good to maybe talk about the second uh, portion of this video it's like uh, what to paint what do you paint you know um, for me uh, it's not as important what I paint as that I make sure I do paint and uh, I was speaking with a, a friend of the channel over the email and um, he was talking about he's got things he wants to paint you know he's has a a, a, a different approach you know and um, for me yeah I got uh, I got a big folder for all the things I can paint but surprisingly I'll just pass over the same thing again and again and again and again uh, this particular image was not even really properly prepped when I came into the studio yesterday I had to uh, I had to go, that's it, that's what I want to do. And that, uh, actually I talk about this in the uh, the live members area uh, section, but we'll, we'll chat a bit about it now. So how, how did I decide that this is what I wanted to paint? Well, I had uh, one, some paintings I did of some figures uh, in my um, studio drawing. And uh, I had a, um, a young lady who's a student coming in. I think she might be a little sensitive. You know, there were nothing that risque, but I just thought, oh, I'll pop, I'll pop this over the top, you know. And um, uh, what I did was I grabbed this board, and this board's sitting there, and it's kind of looking at me and saying, so you're going to do something? <laughs> and I'm going, well, it's 8 by 10. I don't want to have anything prepped that size. But uh, I looked through my folder of potential images and I saw this I says I can make that work as an 8 by 10 so I uh, said about uh, squishing it a little bit and, um, and making it work um, doing some color adjustments I maybe uh, would have liked to go a little further in that regard but let's face it green you know a lot of greens you know so we're doing the range of greens we got a lot of reds in there and things like that too um, maybe I could even gone further with that don't don't know for sure but uh, so it was the board that that sparked um, the progression and that so many times is how I, I operate I've got 
sports prepped or prepared, I go, well, what size do I feel like working? I might go 8 by 12, 8 by 10, 10 by 14, whatever, you know. I've been doing a lot of minis lately, so I might go 4 by 6 or 3.5 by 5 or 3.5 by 3.5. Uh, if I decide, oh, let's say I want to do a little mini, oh, well, what have I got prepped that'll work for that? What do I have prepped that, say, a 3.5 by 3.5 that'll be a little square? If I have something great, if I don't, maybe I look in the folder of things I think I might like to paint. I might take a minute to prep it, or I might say, nah, I don't have anything like that, so what else? But I'll find a board, and then I'll start moving from there. And um, that's is, uh, why I recommend you have boards prepped, ready to paint on, uh, folders uh, full of images. Um, and now that's the other thing, maybe... Um, you know, I don't really have anything of my own, but that would be a good opportunity to do a master study. That was last weekend where I did the, um, on the last Saturday, I did the uh, study of Stormy Day by John Francis Murphy. It's done, you know, pretty popular on the channel, which is great, you know. Um, not that that really affects me that greatly as to what I will or won't paint, but it's always nice to know people like something, and uh, they seem to like the Murphy. I know I love him. Um, and that was that day. That was uh, I had a, uh, a eight by twelve board prepped. I had uh, the image handy in my main folder, and I says, "Okay, it's a stormy day. It's that we're we're going to do today." Um, and so this is very similar in that. Uh, okay, it's going to be uh, this forest scene uh, with the road heading into the light. You know, and I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we got a little more time here, so. Let's talk a bit more about that simplification. So really the main, uh, like I, uh, so that main large trunk on our right uh, was a little more massive in the reference. I gave it a little less weight, but it really is like the anchor or focal, bit of a focal point, right? Uh, it's balanced on the other side by that other trunk. In the reference, that was way closer to the edge. I brought that in a little closer and also um, the tree that you just saw me painting on, the one right up against the road. Um, and then that other one in the middle, I chose to go ahead and do that as well, you know. Uh, and you can see I have a few branches going on here, but way less than, you know, maybe the hundred branches that might have been in the uh, reference image. Uh, hundreds of branches, hundreds of sky holes uh, can be overwhelming. And, um, you know, if you're uh, wrestling with this kind of image, this kind of forest image, just remember you want to, like, I, I, I'm sort of blessed with being nearsighted, uh, which I didn't think was a blessing for a, a large portion of my life, but it really is in that I can take off my glasses and I'm seeing, I mean, I can see the colors, I can see the shapes, but I'm not seeing the details um, as clearly as I would if I had my glasses on. Um, and that's like a total, uh, total blessing because it just allows me to get a big, a big picture, a big zoom out, so to speak. Um, and I end up doing quite a lot of my painting session, uh, without my glasses on. And then of course it gives me a whole different perspective when I put the glasses back on and I go, oh, okay. Oh, that's what that was. <laughs> you go, well, how could you paint things out knowing what they, what they are? Well, cause you just paint the shapes and the colors, you know, you're going to be pretty well set up. Um, so, uh, it took me a while to get good at these types of scenes, um, and the best way, of course, to get good at anything is by practicing a lot, and, um, in fact, again, in the members area, not to hype that too much, but, uh, I pulled up some prints that I sell at my, uh, studio there, you know, where I've done similar scenes and showed, well, this is a nice painting I made a print of. I do like the painting, but I'm showing how... Uh, I have way more sky holes. It's not as effective as what I'm doing now. And that's the beauty of uh, continuing in, on with your art and continuing to progress, you know. Uh, you get better. If you do a lot of work, you just get better. And uh, oh, that's an awesome feeling. I, I recommend it for anyone. It's certainly better than, say, that feeling of accomplishment you might get from mastering a video game or something like that. Um, not that I'm dissing any of you folks in the video games or anything. Um, here we're going to go in and I fix a little bit of that, that tree on our uh, left-hand side. I can see it was a little skinny there. There we go. That's real time, too, just for you. Anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you coming around. I know you got lots of different things you could look at. Um, uh, 
leave me a comment or you know click that thanks also smash the like button why not apparently that's good for the channel and if it's good for the channel we keep getting these videos to people that they might help and that that too would be a good thing until i come back uh, with another video for your edification and enjoyment do me a favor do me a solid take good care of yourself your family all your loved ones stay out of trouble and god bless you and your family